I think that what we're seeing in terms of, say, the, the feminists who embrace sexual disenchantment, the feminists who, who seek essentially in every way to permit women to live like men as much as possible, who try and erase the differences between men and women across the board. Um, I think that this is just a sort of feminist instantiation of hyperliberalism. So an ideology that prioritizes freedom above absolutely everything else and doesn't see any other, doesn't see freedom as, as something to be balanced with other virtues, but sees it as a, as the sole goal, you know. I think that we are seeing that ideology just brought to its logical conclusions with something like sexual, the idea of sexual disenchantment. Because if you want people to be completely and utterly free, then you do have to take aim at the idea of sacredness, at the idea that we should be confined by any kind of traditional ideas, even that we should have obligations to each other. You know, I mean, one of the things that I um, think is really disastrous about this, this what I call liberal feminism in the book, is that it, it cannot accommodate motherhood because the nature of being a mother is that you have, you have enormous obligations to your baby. You have an incredibly strong link, initially physical and then, and then increasingly just emotional, but you know, a very strong link with your baby to the extent that you can't really understand a mother or a baby as being individuals. They're a dyad, you know. And if your goal is to promote women's freedom, you can't reconcile that with the existence of the dyad and with the fact that, you know, that um, a comment that a friend of mine made, um, which I repeat all the time because it's because it's funny and because it's true, is that um, the only thing that will restrict your freedom more than having a baby is going to prison, which is completely true. <laughs> you know, I say we both had our first babies at about the same time. Um, how do you... How do you accommodate that within an ideology that sees the freedom of the individual as the most important thing? You know, you can't. So basically you end up just rejecting motherhood is basically what's happened. And we're even getting to the point now where liberal feminism is rejecting the female body, full stop. You know, we now have the medical technology that will allow women to, um, you know, use a surrogate if you don't want to be pregnant yourself, allow you to transition to being a man if that's what you want, you know. we. If, if, if freedom is your goal, then the human body is very much an impediment. And, and, this, and this has produced a kind of politics where actually the use of other people's bodies, often the bodies of poorer people, is seen as a completely reasonable sort of self actualization project. And the idea of having any social guardrails, any tradition, any, you know, anything sacred is also fair game. Um, and I'm not convinced at all that that ideology is in the best interest of women, even if it may be in the best interest of a few women who are unusually powerful, etc. I think that, you know, the, the, the argument that I make in, in, in um, my, my book and in my writing in general is I think the biggest losers of the sexual revolution have been poor women, specifically. <laughs>